This hasn't been done before, but I built a 3D racing game from scratch without writing a single line of code. AI tools in game development are starting to rise, and because of this, it's easier for beginners to create a game with zero experience. Recently, a new AI tool has been launched, GitHub Copilot AI. In their last update, they introduced an AI agent that you can ask anything to build, without having any experience with coding. It's a chatbot just like ChatGPT, but this tool specializes in building games. No coding skills, no hours of debugging, just smart AI tools doing the heavy lifting. In this video, I'll show you step by step how I created this 3D racing game in Unity. You can simply copy my steps to create the same game. First things first, let's set up our project. Head over to Unity and click on Create Project. From here, we're going to choose Universal Render Pipeline, URP. This will give us better lighting, smoother graphics, and an overall more optimized game right from the start. Now, it's time to name our project. You can go with something simple or get creative. Once you've got the name locked in, hit Create, and Unity will take care of the rest. In just a few moments, we'll have a fresh, empty 3D workspace ready to bring our racing game to life. With the project set up, it's time to bring in the assets that will shape the game. Instead of building everything from scratch, we'll use free pre-made assets to save time while still achieving a polished look. To get started, go to the top menu, click Window and select Asset Store. This is where we'll find everything needed to bring the racing game to life. First, we'll grab the Prometeo car controller, which handles essential car physics like acceleration, braking and drifting. Then, we'll import Arcade Free Racing Car, an optional yet sleek selection of car models that fits perfectly with the racing experience. For the track, Kajaman's Roads provides smooth, well-designed road assets built specifically for racing environments. Finally, to add depth and the atmosphere, Environment Track Low Poly will bring in background elements to make the world feel immersive. Once all the assets are imported, keeping things organized is key. We'll create a new folder in the project window called Imported Assets and drag everything inside to avoid clutter. Another folder named Scripts will store all the AI-generated scripts used throughout development. With the assets in place and everything neatly arranged, it's time to start building the racing world. I've linked all the assets below so you can easily download them. We've imported all the assets. If you've ever worked with Unity before, you might already know that things don't always look perfect right away. One common issue, pink materials. If you're seeing bright pink textures on some objects, don't panic. This just means those materials were designed for a different render pipeline. Since we're using Universal Render Pipeline, URP, we'll need to convert them to display correctly. Fixing this is quick and easy. Just head to each assets folder and look for the material section. If you spot any pink materials, select all of them. Then navigate to the top menu and go to edit. Hover over rendering, then navigate to materials. And finally, click convert selected materials to URP. Unity will automatically update everything and those distracting pink textures will be gone in seconds. Once the conversion is done, your materials will render properly and everything will look as it should. Since that is out of the way, your assets are fully set up. Now it's time to start placing them into the game world. With all the assets in place, it's time to start shaping the actual game world. This step is where things start to feel real. It's not just a collection of assets anymore, but the foundation of your racing game. Setting up the play area and the player car is crucial because it defines the track layout, the surrounding environment, and how the player interacts with the world. Think of it like setting up a racetrack. You need a clear path, the right surroundings, and of course, a car that responds smoothly to every turn and acceleration. Let's start bringing the racetrack to life. First, open the Kajamans Roads asset pack and choose a road that matches the feel of your racing game. Once you've found the right one, drag it into the scene window. To keep things organized and make adjustments easier, set its position to zero, zero and zero in the transform properties. This centers the track in the scene, ensuring everything aligns properly as we build around it. 
A track alone won't make for an exciting race. We need to build a world around it. Open the environment pack low poly folder and start adding details that enhance the experience. Place these strategically along the track to create depth and immersion without cluttering the racing path. The right scenery can make a simple track feel like a high speed adventure. Every race needs a clear finish line. Whether it's a checkered flag, a banner or a simple post from the asset pack, choose something that stands out. Place it at the end of the track to give players a clear goal. This visual cue will be important when we later implement mechanics like lap counting or race completion. Alright, perfect. Now the track is in place and the environment is finally set up, which means the game world is finally starting to take shape. Now that we have our track, we need a car for the player to control. Open the Prometeo car controller folder, navigate to the prefab section and drag the car prefab into the scene window. Place the car at the starting position of the track and make sure it's aligned properly so that when the game starts, the car is facing the right direction. To make things more organized, rename the car object to player in the hierarchy window. This will help us keep track of different elements in our game as we add more features. Next, we'll add sound effects to the car to make the gameplay feel more dynamic. Start by creating a new empty game object inside the player car and name it sounds. This will serve as a container for all audio components related to the vehicle. Now, create another empty game object under the sounds object and name it car engine. This will hold the sound effect for the car's engine noise. Open the sounds folder from the asset pack, find the car engine sound file and drag it into to the car engine game object to attach it as an audio source. All right, so finally, to make sure the sound is correctly linked to our player, select the player game object, then drag the car engine object into the car engine sound reference in the inspector. This ensures that when the car moves, the engine sound will play, adding realism to the gameplay. A good racing game needs a smooth, responsive camera that follows the player's movements. Instead of manually coding a camera system, we'll use Cinemachine a built-in Unity tool that makes it easy to create dynamic camera movements. First, go to the top menu, select Window, then click Package Manager. In the Unity registry, search for Cinemachine and install it. Once installed, go to Game Object, navigate to Cinemachine, select Targets, then click Follow Camera. Now, we need to link the camera to the player car. Select the Cinemachine camera in the hierarchy, then drag the player car object into the tracking parameter field in the inspector. Adjust the camera settings to make sure it follows the car smoothly without being too close or too far. To keep the camera properly oriented, change the binding mode setting to lock to target with world up. This ensures the camera maintains a steady perspective while following the player's movements, preventing awkward angles or unnecessary rotations. To complete our racing setup, we need a trigger marker that detects when the player crosses the finish line. Think of it like the electronic timing system in real races. It's what makes sure every lap or race completion is properly registered. Without it, the game wouldn't know when someone has finished a race. Start by creating a new empty game object and renaming it finish line. Then add a box collider component to it. This collider acts as an invisible checkpoint detecting when the player's car passes through. Make sure to position it at the finish line and adjust its size so that it spans the width of the road. This ensures that no matter where the car crosses, it gets registered. And that's it. With the track, environment, player car, camera system, and finish line all set up, the core foundation of our racing game is in place. With the core elements of our racing game in place, it's time to add a timer and UI elements to track the player's speed and progress. Think about any great racing game. What makes it exciting isn't just the driving, but also seeing your time, speed and progress in real time. These small details add to the immersion, making the player feel like they're in an actual race, pushing for their best time. All right, let's start. We need to create a script that will ruin the timer from the moment the game begins and stop once the player crosses the finish line. First, select the finish line trigger marker that we previously created. Then, in the project window, create a new c -sharp script and name it Game Finish. And now we are using AI to take care of the coding. Once the script is created, 
open it in Visual Studio and launch GitHub Copilot. In the editor, enter the following prompt. Create me a game finish script that runs a timer at the start of the game. And if the player hits the finish line, the timer stops. Make sure the timer can be referenced. After Copilot generates the script, copy the code and save the file. Then go back to Unity and attach the game finish script to the finish line game object by selecting the finish line in the hierarchy, then dragging the script into the inspector window. All right, perfect. So now every time the game starts, the timer will begin counting. And once the player crosses the finish line, the timer will stop. This adds a competitive element to the game, allowing players to track their race time. But a great racing game isn't just about speed. It's about feeling in control and knowing exactly how fast you're going. That's why we need a user interface, UI, to display the player's speed and race time. This will help keep track of progress and make the gameplay feel more immersive. All right, to do this, right click anywhere in the hierarchy window, then go to UI and create a new UI canvas game object. This will serve as the foundation for our on-screen display. Next, right click the newly created UI object, go to legacy and select text game object. Rename this object to speed value since it will be responsible for displaying the player's speed. Adjust its position and size in the scene window to place it where you want it to appear on the screen. You can tweak the font, size and color to match the game's aesthetic. Now we are going to duplicate the speed value object to create a miles per hour indicator. This will visually display the speed in miles per hour, making it more intuitive for the player. Adjust the position and formatting to align it correctly next to the speed value. Once that's done, duplicate the text object once more, this time for the timer display. Position it in a visible and easy to read location on the screen, also the player can track their time as they race. To ensure the UI scales properly across different screen resolutions, select the canvas in the hierarchy, then in the inspector window, change the UI scale mode to scale with screen size. This ensures that the UI elements adjust dynamically, making them look consistent across various devices and screen sizes. All right, so we are almost done with creating the game, but having a speedometer and timer is great, but they won't mean much if they aren't actually displaying real-time data. Now, we need to link everything so that the game can properly update and show the player's speed and race time as they drive. First, select the finish line game object, then drag the timer UI game object into the inspector window under the relevant reference field. This links the timer script to the UI, ensuring that the race time appears on the screen as the player drives. Next, open the player game object and drag the speed value UI object into the reference. This will allow the car's speed to be updated in real time, reflecting the player's acceleration and movement throughout the race. And that's it. With the finish line system, timer and UI elements now fully set up, our game is starting to feel more polished. Players can now see their speed, track their time, and have a clear finish line to race towards, making the experience more engaging and competitive. All right, so here we are. We built a fully functional 3D racing game without writing a single line of code. AI handled the coding, we handled the creativity, and in no time, we had a working game ready to play. Now, the real question is, what's next? Will you build bigger tracks, add new cars, or push the limits even further? Whatever it is, you've got the power to create. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to stick around because there's a lot more coming. Bigger projects, crazier ideas, and even more AI-powered game development. See you in the next one.